The Shetland Sheepdog is a small, alert, rough-coated, long-haired working dog. He must be sound, agile, and sturdy, able to perform the function for which the breed was developed. The Sheltie is intensely loyal, affectionate, and responsive to his owner. He is reserved toward strangers, but not shy or timid. True to his working dog heritage, the Shetland Sheepdog is intelligent, easy to train, and quick to respond when he knows what's expected of him. Shelties have proved to be outstanding in obedience competition. Like the Collie, the Shetland Sheepdog traces its ancestry to the Scottish Border Collie. The Shelties' predecessors were introduced to the Shetland Islands where they were crossed with small, intelligent, long-haired breeds to produce a small, rugged dog suited to the climate and terrain. From these beginnings, subsequent crosses were made with collies. Towards the end of the 19th century, the immediate ancestors of today's Shetland Sheepdog emerged. The breed was first recognized by the Kennel Club in England in 1909 as the Shetland Collie. In 1914, the breed was given a separate classification as the Shetland Sheepdog. Shelties were being exhibited, bred and registered with the American Kennel Club just before America's entry into World War I. The American Shetland Sheepdog Association was founded on February 12, 1929 and has been the breed's guiding force ever since. The Shetland Sheepdog bears the same relationship in size and general appearance to the rough collie as the Shetland Pony does to the draft horse from which it was developed. The purpose of this film is to provide a study of the Shetland Sheepdog to aid judges, breeders and exhibitors in evaluating and improving the breed. The Sheltie is a small breed, standing between 13 and 16 inches at the shoulder. There is no preferred height. The standard describes precisely how to measure the breed. Height is determined by a line perpendicular to the ground from the top of the shoulder blades. The dog standing naturally with four legs parallel to the line of measurement. Shetland Sheepdogs under 13 inches or over 16 inches are disqualified from the show ring. Judges sometimes wonder when to measure a dog in the ring. A good rule to follow is, if the thought that a dog is either under or over crosses your mind, then you must measure. Using the wicket to check height is quick and easy. Adjust the wicket for the proper height, either 13 or 16 inches, depending on whether you're measuring for under or over, and have the handler place the dog on the table. Make sure the dog is standing in a natural position before making the measurement. Don't measure until you are sure he is. Bring the wicket up the dog's back to rest on the top of the shoulder blades. If the dog is over, the legs of the wicket will not reach the table. If the dog is under, its shoulder blade will not reach the crossbar. The outline of the Sheltie should be so symmetrical that no part appears out of proportion to the whole. The correct Sheltie outline is difficult to describe in words, but readily apparent to the eye. The key words are symmetrical and balanced. As well as being symmetrical and in proportion, the correct Sheltie is immediately recognizable as a dog or a bitch. This has nothing to do with size. A dog should appear masculine, a bitch feminine. This is definitely a dog. Note the fullness of the coat, especially the frill and at the loins. Even in profile, his head has a masculine quality. His expression also conveys the same masculinity. In contrast, this mature bitch carries a decidedly less profuse coat, which is most noticeable on the loins. She has a much softer expression and a decidedly feminine way of holding her head. The sum total is a very feminine look. 
you can see that size has nothing to do with masculinity or femininity. The coat plays an important part in the overall appearance of the Sheltie, but it can be overemphasized and overdone. The coat must fit the dog. The fit and quality of the coat is just as important as the amount. Judges who give too much weight to abundance of coat in the ring are doing the breed a disservice. A Sheltie's coat is double, consisting of a long, straight, harsh outer coat and a dense, furry undercoat that gives the entire coat a standoff quality. Hair on the face, tips of ears and feet is smooth, while the mane and frill, the hair below the neck on the chest, is abundant and particularly impressive in males. In bitches, the coat is less full, especially in the chest and loin areas. The forelegs are well feathered, as are the hind legs, except below the hock joint. The tail is profusely coated. For the show ring, excess hair on ears, feet, and hocks may be trimmed. Coats that are short and flat, in whole or in part, or that are wavy, curly, soft or silky, are faulty, as are dogs lacking undercoat. The Sheltie's coat may be black, blue merle, or sable. The sable is defined as ranging from golden through mahogany. All colors are marked with varying amounts of white and or tan. Conspicuous white body spots are a fault. Dogs more than 50% white are to be so severely penalized as to effectively eliminate them from competition. Brindle, the only color disqualification, seems no longer to exist as a color in the breed. Rustiness in a black or blue coat should be faulted. A complete understanding of the desired overall outline and appearance of the Sheltie is based on a detailed knowledge of the parts. Here are several good Sheltie heads. Look at them carefully. What makes them good? How do you evaluate the Sheltie's head? The head as a whole should be refined. When viewed from the side or the top, the head is a long, blunt wedge, tapering slightly from ears to nose. The nose must be black. The top of the skull should be flat, showing no prominence at the nuchal crest, the top of the occiput. Skull and muzzle should be of equal length, the balance point being the inner corner of the eye. In profile, the top line of the skull should parallel the top line of the muzzle but on a higher plane due to the slight but definite stop. Planes that are not parallel, that is a two-angle head, are faulty. Too much stop is also faulty, as is a head that has too little or virtually no stop. The lips are tight, upper and lower, fitting smoothly together all the way around. The jaws are clean and powerful. The deep, well-developed underjaw, rounded at the chin, should extend to the base of the nostrils. A snipey muzzle is faulty, as is an underjaw lacking breadth or depth, or that is short, receding, or shallow. The teeth meet in a scissors bite and should be level and evenly spaced. A bite that is over or undershot is faulty, as are missing or crooked teeth, or teeth that are visible when the mouth is closed. The eyes are medium size, set somewhat obliquely in the skull with almond-shaped rims. The eyes should be dark. In blue merle dogs, blue or merle eyes are permissible, or one of each, or dark flecked with blue. Light eyes are faulty. Eyes that are round, too large or too small, or with prominent brows are faulty. The ears are small and flexible, placed high and carried three-fourths erect, with the tips breaking forward. When relaxed, the ears are folded lengthwise and thrown back into the coat that surrounds the head. Low-set ears are faulty. Prick or bat ears, twisted or hound ears, and ear leather that is too thick or too thin are faulty. The contours and chiseling of the head, the shape, set, and use of the ears, the placement, shape, and color of the eyes combine to produce the proper Sheltie expression. The expression should be alert, gentle, intelligent, and questioning. 
towards strangers, Shelties should show watchfulness and reserve, but no fear. Let's take a closer look at the four heads we showed you earlier. They're all excellent Sheltie heads, but they are all different with different qualities. This profile has all the correct Sheltie features. It strikes you as masculine, balanced, and symmetrical. The muzzle and back skull are of equal length, with a balance point at the corner of the eye. The planes of the muzzle and top of the skull are clearly parallel. The jaws are clean and powerful. Ear set and carriage are correct. This three-quarter view is an excellent example of correct Sheltie expression. Expression is difficult to describe. The dog is alert and intelligent. The total impression is pleasing. The proportion of muzzle to back skull is balanced. The head is wedge-shaped with the almond-shaped eyes set obliquely in the head. The ears are well placed and carried correctly. The symmetrical markings of the face add to the pleasing expression. This full frontal view of a blue Merle dog is quite appealing. This dog's head is properly wedge-shaped, with correct eye shape and placement. The ears are particularly well-shaped and carried. Compare the ear placement on this dog with that of the sable Sheltie we just saw. Both this dog and the preceding one have excellent expression. Which is better? To separate the two, you would have to have them before you in the flesh. At first glance, the irregular blaze on this dog's face might belie the symmetry and balance of the head, but you must learn to look beneath such markings. This dog's frontal view makes an extremely pleasing impression. It has a look that is soft and alert, questioning and intelligent. The balanced proportions of the entire head contribute to the overall quality, which is enhanced by the symmetrical markings. The muzzle and back skull are in balance. The head is wedge-shaped and the ears are well set. All excellent Sheltie heads, but each an individual. Each with its own outstanding characteristics and minor faults. The neck should be muscular arched and of sufficient length to give the head a proud carriage. A short neck, or a neck that is too thick, is faulty. In overall appearance, the body should seem moderately long, as measured from the shoulder joint to the ischium, the rearmost extremity of the pelvic bone. However, much of this length is actually due to the proper angulation and breadth of the shoulders and hindquarters. The back itself should be comparatively short. A relatively short back does not mean a short cobby dog. The standard requires a balanced profile. Dogs short in the body are usually short-necked also, and this is not the desired look. This Sheltie is too short in the back. while this one is too long to be ideal. The back should be level and strongly muscled. Sway backs or roach backs are faulty. The chest should be deep, with the brisket reaching to the point of the elbow. The ribs should be well sprung and flattened at their lower half to allow free play of the foreleg and shoulder. The Sheltie's abundant coat can hide faults in this area so judges will check them thoroughly by feel. A narrow or shallow chest is faulty, as are barrel-ribbed and slab-sided dogs. The abdomen is moderately tucked up. The tail should be long enough so that when it is laid along the back edge of the hind legs, the last vertebra reaches the hock joint. A short tail, or a tail twisted at the end, is faulty. 
The tail is carried straight down or in a slight upward curve when the dog is at rest. When alert, the tail is normally lifted, but it should never be curved forward over the back. The Shetland Sheepdog should move with an effortless, smooth trot. This requires proper skeletal alignment of shoulders, hips, and legs. In the front, the shoulder joint forms as nearly as possible a 90 degree angle between the shoulder blade and the upper arm, with the shoulder blade sloping forward at approximately a 45 degree angle to the ground. The two shoulder blades are separated only by the vertebrae at the withers, but they slope outward to the shoulder joint to accommodate the desired spring of rib. Lack of outward slope of the shoulder insufficient angulation between the shoulder and the upper arm or a short upper arm are all faulty and will inhibit the Sheltie's movement. The elbow joint should be equidistant from the ground and the withers. The elbow should turn neither in or out so that the leg is straight from the shoulder to the ground. The foreleg should be straight from all angles from the elbows to the feet. They should be muscular with strong bone. Light bone is a fault, but excessively heavy bone is also undesirable. The pasterns are very strong, sinewy, and flexible. All four feet should be oval and compact, with the toes well arched and fitting tightly together. The pads are deep and tough, the nails hard and strong. Feet that turn in or out are faulty. Splay, hair, or cat feet are all faulty. The hindquarters provide the power to drive the dog forward. There should be a slight arch at the loins and the croup should slope gradually to the rear. The hip bone, or pelvis, should be set at a 30 degree angle to the spine. The thigh bone should be set into the pelvis at a right angle corresponding to the angle of the shoulder blade and upper arm. The thigh should be broad and muscular. The lower leg bones, the tibia and fibula, join the thigh bone at the stifle joint, which should be distinctly angled. The overall length of the lower leg from stifle to hock should at least equal the length of the thigh bone or slightly exceed it. The hock joint should be clean cut, angular, with good bone and strong ligamentation. The hock should be short and straight, viewed from all angles. Poorly defined hock joints, cow hocks, and hocks that turn out are all faulty. In motion, the Shetland Sheepdog should be free-flowing and effortless. There should be no jerkiness or stiff, stilted up and down movement. Choppy or jerky action, mincing steps, excessive front action or hackney movement, and pacing are all faulty. The correct moving Sheltie is driven straight and true by the hindquarters. The foreleg reaches well forward, easily covering ground. The feet should be lifted only enough to clear the ground as the leg comes forward. While forelegs and hind legs move forward, almost perpendicular to the ground at a walk, you begin to see them slant inward at a trot, until at a swift trot, the feet are brought towards the center line of the body and the dog is single tracking. When you have observed the qualities and faults illustrated in this discussion, you are on your way to understanding the Shetland Sheepdog. You must be able to put your knowledge of the standard to use in evaluating each Sheltie that comes before you. In judging the Sheltie, first take a look at the class to determine balance. Then walk down the line to check individual heads and expressions. A judge should not expect a Sheltie to be showing every minute it is in the ring. So it is important to form an impression of heads and expressions early.
After gating the class, the dogs are examined one by one on the table. They should not be expected to bait while on the table. The judge should concentrate on structure and condition and not be concerned with overall appearance or expression at that moment. The judge will gate each dog individually and as the dog comes to a stop, receives another opportunity to assess general appearance and expression. It is important enough to repeat, Shelties should not be expected to show constantly while in the ring. It is important for the dog to use himself well enough for the judge to determine his quality. But quality, not showmanship, is always of primary importance. The Sheltie is normally reserved to strangers. The practice of throwing keys or other noisy objects at the dog's feet by judges is to be discouraged. Other judging points to remember in going over a Sheltie entry are that bitches should exhibit feminine characteristics regardless of size, and that a big coat does not make up for other faults of structure condition or temperament. The Shetland Sheepdog deserves to be judged for the qualities that made him a great little working dog in years gone by. The same qualities that today make the Sheltie a cherished companion and family member. Active, handsome, intelligent, intensely loyal, responsive to his people, reserved towards strangers, hardy and easily trained.